and I just realized that for a minute I my video wasn't working so let me just say this one more time so I have this recorded uh, so we chose the function or the integral the definite integral from 1 to 2 from sine cube dx uh, with four sub intervals with the rightmost point we picture the interval we determine delta x as 2 minus 1 over 4 it has to be in front because it's base times height 1 fourth times f of 1.25 base times height base is 1 fourth times 1.25 so I'm we are choosing these points because we selected the rightmost point okay I think I'm I got caught up now and now I'm gonna record this so I can post it for you uh, where is again my record button record on this computer yes okay so I go to edit and I click enter. I clear my lists. So go highlight the top, clear, enter. Highlight the top, clear, enter. I didn't need to click all three, but I just wanted to show you how to do it. So we have 1.25. Make sure that the mode is in radiant mode. Please, Victoria, can you hear me? Yes, Excellent, please. I'm begging you. Okay, so um, it is in radiant mode. Good. So I go to lists and edit and I put in my numbers 1.25 and 1.5 and uh, 1.75 and 2. Then I go back up and I create list L2 in the following way. The function is sine cubed, right? So I have to have that 0.25 in front, which is 1 fourth. And then I put sine, I put parentheses first. I put sine, I put list L1, I close list L1, I close sine, and I put power 3. And when I click enter, I have all the areas, base, Right, for this is the function value. So this is the area for the first of the first subinterval, the area of the second subinterval, the area, and so on and so forth. I don't want to do this by hand. I go to stats, I go to calculations, one variable stats, on list L2, just give me the sum. And this is the only thing I copy, the sum. So the sum is 0.8879. And that's it. So I'm going to st stop recording and I'm going to post this afterwards. Okay? So notice one more time here. So when I created this list L2, I already put the point 25 in front so I don't forget. Then I open parentheses, I put the sign. I don't, I didn't mean that. So again, 0.25, which is the number in front, you have to have parentheses here, because I don't think I can put the power on sine afterwards. That's what I'm afraid of. So that's why I put parentheses. So sine, list L1. I want, I want the calculator to put each and every one, one by one in here and, and get the answer. I closed for this list, I closed for sign, I put the power, power 3 for sign, and when I hit enter, what did the calculator do was this? It put in 1.25 in sign and then cubed it and then multiplied by 0.25 and got this answer. Then next, it put in 1.5 in the list in, in sign, calculated sign of 1.5 radians cubed that number and then multiplied by 0.25 and gave me this number. And at the end, I said, I don't want to add this by hand. I couldn't care less. So there is a feature here, which is calc in statistics, one variable stats. But make sure you are adding list L2 because that's what you want. Base times height plus base times height plus base times height. And when you calculate, all you need, careful, you don't need x bar, which is the mean. You don't need the sum of x squared or the standard deviation for the sample or the standard deviation for the, for the population or anything of any of this. You only need this line that adds them up. The summation of list L2. And that's it.
So this problem should take you three minutes. Now, if you're doing it by hand, and you determine this, and you write it down, and determine this, and you write it down, and determine this, and you write it down, and then you multiply by, that would be a tragedy. Because it will take you 15 minutes, and you may not even get this. Good. Good. So now let's see. So antiderivatives we had all the time. Antiderivatives. So let's see if we have any questions on any of that. So I will post this little video um, in, uh, in the folder with all the lecture notes and videos. We can only approximate this, right, at this point. Anything else you would like to work on? Anyone? Anyone? Uh, yes? That change zero. Very good. Problem. Yes. So let's look at the net change. <clears throat> so um, let's. Um, for the net change, um, I will ask about the displa displacement. And yes? Say it again, Victoria. Um, I'm sorry, but I was in the right hand. No, no, no. Maybe, maybe, did I forget something? No, so you know, I wasn't done writing in my notes before you took it away. Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. I should have asked. You know, I post this right after class. Yeah, thank you very much. But you know where to find them, right? All of them. I do, yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, okay, so I will ask uh, the displacement. I will ask uh, to find the distance function. And I will ask total distance. Okay, so let's make up a velocity function. And let's make up a t1, comma t2, a time interval. And let's discuss displacement, the distance function, and the total distance. OK. Um, well, let's say um, 2t plus 5. A simple one. Uh, let's say between, um, I don't know, 2 and 6. Second, second two and second six. So in order to find the displacement, number one, displacement. That is the integral from two to six, from two t plus five, dt. And I find the integral by finding t squared over two plus five t, of course, from two to six. This goes away, and then I plug in 6. I have 36 plus 30, but minus, when I plug in 2, put parentheses, it's safer, and 4 plus 10. So this is 66, and this is minus 14, and I think I get 54. And what is this? Whatever. So let's say this is in meters per second, so this is meters. In number two, the distance function. The distance function is s of t, which is the indefinite integral from 2t plus 5 dt. Of course, remember, I have to always make sure that this function is continuous on 2, 6. Here, there is no point in doing that. There is no need. So this is t squared plus 5t plus a constant c. This is the distance function the most general antiderivative? Now, the total distance between 2 and 6 
number three, total distance. This is the integral from two to six from the absolute value of two t plus five dt. The way I uh, chose the function, it's a simple situation, is two t plus five is 2t plus 5 for t greater than or equal to negative 5 halves, which is always the case. So there is only one option. A simple situation. So I have the integral from 2 to 6 from 2t plus 5 dt, which turns out to be exactly the same thing, 54. But if we change the interval or we change the function a little bit, if I make the function 2t minus 5, for example. So this is another example. So let's say the velocity is 2t minus 5. Then the absolute value of 2t minus 5 has two options. At 2t minus 5 for t greater than equal to 5 halves and negative 2t plus 5 for t less than 5 halves. 5 halves is in between 2 and 6 because this is 2.5. So now the total distance will be the sum of two integrals. From, zero, uh, from 2 to 5 halves from this and um, from uh, two, 5 halves to 6 from this. So please be aware of that. And of course this is also uh, meters. And I saw some of you determine the area and wrote meters per second. So when you determine the total distance, you, can, you are not determining meters per second, right? Some of you wrote that in, uh, in your last homework. No, no. When I integrate the velocity, I'm going back, so I'm determining distance in meters. So be careful with the measurement units. So this was the net change theorem. Anything else we would like to look at? Uh, differentiating a function, giving us an integral. We did that last time. If you want to choose another, we can. And if you want to work on the properties, you did very nicely with the property. I saw that uh, in the previous homework. I was happy to see that. That was nice. You built the function correctly. It was good. So any of this? Do you I need to do the yes? differentiating function as an integral? Good. So do you want to make one up? let's say from um, 2 to the square of x uh, to 5 x squared plus 2. Remember, in this situation, we can only be asked this, nothing else. You're not asked to do anything. This is a function. You're only asked to differentiate it. So what are the preps that we have to worry about? Can we go ahead and differentiate?
or does it need any prep? We need to check if it's continuous. Nope. Because this is not a definite integral. This is a function in the form of an integral. Gabby, I couldn't hear you. Can you say it again? The lower limit has to be Correct. The lower limit has to be a constant. Awesome. Good. So then I have to split it, first of all. Good. So now this is ready. But this is not. As you said, it has to have the lower limit to be the number. Good. So I'm going to swap. Plus. Now it is ready for integration. Uh, for differentiation, of course. Now this is ready, this is ready. So let's differentiate. Minus in front. Can anyone help with this? Anyone? Um, 5x squared plus 2. Or, uh, um, we are, first of all, yeah. Square root of x. Yes, awesome. Times one over squared cosine cubed of six to the square root of x times one over square root of x. Yes, so exactly because it's one over two the square root of x and I simplify. Awesome. Excellent. Great job. Plus. Now for this one. And five x exactly plus two. Yes. Times cosine to the third, and I multiply by 3, so 15x squared plus 6 times, that's it. Please don't try to do anything here, nobody cares, this is it. That's it. That's all you need to do. So please remember, when you have two functions like this, first you have to split it. Write in here whatever you please. Don't write infinity, though. Anything. A, B, C, 1500, whatever. It's up to you. It, nobody looks at it. It's not important. And then, because we're differentiating, so that's a constant. It's going to be zero anyway. So then flip because the constant has to be at the lower limit always. Then the two pieces are ready, and now we can differentiate. Just want to keep them in order. OK, so the last topic here is properties of the definite integral. So let me choose an example. So again, antiderivatives, definite and indefinite with the substitution rule. This is what we did mostly today, um, reviewed today. Uh, the limit of the Riemann sum, of course, only one example. The net change theorem, of course, only one example. The properties, of course, only one example. The a function given as an integral, of course, only one example. Approximation areas, of course, only one example. Okay.
So basically, one uh, here you have several, a few here, a few here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven questions. But one of them will have three, right? So the um, uh, the net change theorem will have part A, B, and C. Okay, so now let's look at the property. I use the properties of integrals. Yeah, so I'm looking at, uh, this is on page 430, and I'm, I picked 59. So it's the integral from 0 to 1 from x squared cosine x dx show that this is less than or equal to 1 third. Let me take this book away. Okay, it's out of the way now. Good, so here we are only asked to, let's see how I'm with.